I'm Hog, this is the dice, and contrary to appearances, I have absolutely no interest in your soul. Just your cash. The topic of today's video is talking about two things that have been running through my mind a lot lately. One is how body modifications can be better used and more diversely employed in creating non-human characters. Body modifications such as the carvings on these horns. The second thing I want to talk about, which ties in neatly, which is why they're both going to be the same video, is how your character design and your world building can build off and feed off each other. One quick little announcement beforehand though, we are going to be starting an Etsy shop in the next few weeks and you're going to be able to buy hand-stitched dice bags, hand-carved wands, weird creepy dolls and one-off creations every so often. That teddy bear, there's only one of it. I'm never doing another one. So if you want it, buy it right away. There will be more things like that. So yes, without further ado, let's jump into the video. First thing I want to go into is the idea of body modifications on non-human characters. And by that, I don't mean the usual like Elves or cat people or lizard people or anything with really really big ears with piercings I don't mean that kind of thing that gets done a lot. It does look great, but that isn't what I mean. I mean Body parts that humans wouldn't normally have getting body modifications, which is something you don't See an awful lot of and I think it's something That's being overlooked in terms of character design uh, what I'm working on in this video right now is a set of horns. First I'm trying out the idea on some offcuts of horn and on a, uh, a little horn trumpet that I have. Uh, the thing about horn as a material is that it's made out of a protein called keratin. Keratin is the same thing that your hair is made of and the same thing that your fingernails is made of. You can drill, cut, and grind away at a horn while it's still on the animal's head. They won't feel it any more than they'll feel you cutting their hair because it's made out of the exact same stuff. As long as you don't go too close to the root, it won't hurt them at all. And the same thing would go for minotaurs, for demons, for satyrs, for fawns. They're not going to feel what's done to their horns as long as it doesn't go too close to the root. That means they have massive potential for body modification. You can carve things into the horns and inlay them with paint like I'm doing in this video. Or you can cut the horns down, you could carve them in a more complex way. You could do like some much deeper carving, kind of like tree sculptures. You could do that kind of thing. You can drill holes in them and put in piercings like I did with um, my friend's horn fact for the Night Vale show. You can even bend horns into other shapes using steam and hot water. This would be so cool. I would love to see more characters like this. And it doesn't have to end with horns. Horn, I'm just using horn as an example right now because it's a material I was working with myself very recently. But say your character is a rat person or a lizard person or a demon, something with a tail. You could have piercings going up and down the tail. Tell me a ladder of piercings going up the tail wouldn't look badass. Or say your character has huge bat-like wings. They're Again, a demon is coming to mind, or a dragon type character, or some kind of bat person. That is an amazing canvas for tattoos. That's just... Can you imagine the kind of tattoo you could get on that surface area? That would look so cool. So my point mostly is, when you're designing a non-human character, you have to think about their body parts and you've got to think about ideas like body modification and see how they could apply to the non-human body parts, especially things like horns, which would be 
so easy and would give you more scope for body modification than ordinary human body parts would. Okay, moving on to the other thing I wanted to talk about, which is how your character design and your world building can help to build off each other and influence each other. As you can see with this horn, the, uh, the longer of the two horns, I've carved in a kind of plant-like, uh, ivy-like tracery, and I'm inlaying it with gold. So that's the character design point. That's how the character design is manifesting in a body modification on the horn as a gold tracery of plant life. Now, uh, that idea, how I was going to do the body mod modification, the exact shape of it, the idea that it would be that plant tracery, came out of my world building. What I decided was that there was this species of goat people, and that all of the goat people in their culture would carve designs in their horn related to the geography of where their tribe lived. So this particular goat person, his tribe, lives between a lake and a forest. So the gold plant-like tracery on, on the longer horn reflects the forest and the more horizontal blue tracery, kind of wave-like, represents the ripples on the lake. Now I'm taking it a little bit further than that. As you can see, the tracery, the carving on the longer horn with the plants, much larger, takes up much more surface area than the tracery of the water. And that's because the idea occurred to me that within this goat person culture, greater prevalence is given to the aspect of your geography you are connected the most with. So this particular goat person is more connected to the forest than they are to the lake. So that means the plant-like tracery takes precedence, it gets more space, because that's the thing that this goat person connects with more and values more. And what that does is that creates not just a culture for one of your races, or an aspect of their culture, it also creates subsets of aspects of that culture, which go into how you design your characters. And then also, the way you are designing the character gives you ideas for how you build the culture. And I think that's an important thing a lot of writers who don't work in visual arts as well overlook. And there you have it. I hope you all enjoyed that video. If you did, please press the like button, subscribe if you haven't done that already, please leave a comment. Your applause is the only, the only, only way to make up for my daily chant of I don't believe in fairies. 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 I don't believe in fairies.